Hi everyone, I'm Zach Kircher and you're watching Kircher Talks Entertainment. Now, you may be wondering, hey, this is this is different, you know, don't you normally do like video essay type content where you're sort of hidden behind the camera and you're, no, you're just doing voiceover? And yes, you're right. Typically that is what I do. But this time I kind of wanted to do something a little bit different, you know, because um, I feel like there are topics that don't really suit that kind of video essay style and I want to do something in front of the camera sometimes. And this particular occasion is that I wanted to do a video talking about my Blu-ray collection. Other movie YouTubers have done this before and, you know, I'm not just doing it to try to copy off them. The specific reason I want to try to do this is because this month marks the 15th anniversary of when I actually started my Blu-ray collection. So this is kind of me in my own sort of way, kind of doing like a journal entry, if you will, you know, kind of commemorating this great occasion for me as a movie lover and especially as a Blu-ray collector as well. And so I hope this will be fun, you know, kind of showing a little bit of my Blu-ray collection to you guys, allowing me to be able to share some opinions on movies I don't normally get to talk about here on this channel. And I, yeah, I hope it's a fun experience for the book for all of us. Now, I do have to confess something about being a Blu-ray collector to all of you that might kind of sound like a cardinal sin for Blu-ray collecting. As someone who's been trying to consolidate space in my house after, you know, after my wife and I had a kid a few months ago, one thing that we did is we took a grand, the grand majority of our Blu-rays and we actually moved them from their standard cases into Blu-ray books. How can you do this? This is outrageous. What you say is heresy. Yes, yes, I know. That sounds like a crummy thing to do. You know, you're supposed to display all of your movies, you know, and how many, no matter how many you have. But listen, you know, like at some point, the last thing that a man and his wife needs is less space. You know, we can use all the space that we can get now that we've started a family and whatnot. But you know, that doesn't mean I want to discard my, my movies either. What I have done as a result of that is I have put the majority of my collection into books like these. Uh, this right here is one of our family movie books. Um, we have like five of these total. And so I'm not gonna spend most of my time here in this video talking about like every single movie that I own. If you really do want to check that out, I'd have a list on my letterboxed profile that lists every single movie that I own. It's roughly like 600 movies or so, just about. What this video is really gonna be about is me showing off the collectible Blu-rays. You know, the stuff that's in like special packaging, steel books, Criterion movies, all that kind of thing. You know, the things that I'm not going to want to get the get rid of the cases for, because that stuff is cool. You know, it's it's displaying the, the art of the movie and everything's like everything like that, and they include special features. So that stuff I'm gonna to wanna to show you and the stuff that I'm not gonna get rid of. But before I do that, there's one movie I wanna show you from this particular book, this family book, that started this whole thing out in the first place. Man, I mean, just, just look at all that. Look at all those discs, it's crazy. Okay, I think I found it. Yep, here it is. This one disc right here. Napoleon Dynamite. This is the very first movie I ever bought on Blu-ray, 15 years ago. This single disc has stood the test of time, man. I don't know, I can't tell you how many times I've played this on loop, you know, either for myself or for friends, and it still runs great to this day. That's what I love about Blu-ray discs. You know, they, they're made much better than your average DVD, you know, the discs are much cleaner and they hold a lot more space. And so that's the one reason why I'm grateful that I started a collection of Blu-rays rather than just DVDs, because they're going to last a long time, you know, maybe even more decades, hopefully. And they'll keep, it, they'll keep them in a condition to where I can share them with, you know, the kid that we have now, as well as any other others that we might have. So that is why I wanted to start my collection in the first place, you know, to have Movies that I can cherish for our family um, for many more years to come. But now, let's get into the good stuff. The collectible stuff. And understand that I'm not going to take like a whole ton of time talking about each particular Blu-ray. You know, I'm mainly just going to focus on like maybe spending a minute topped on each of them. 
And so if there's a movie that you feel you want to hear more of my opinions about, feel free to skip ahead in the video. You know, that might wreck my watch time, but you know, I recognize your time is valuable too. So do whatever you please. All right, first up, and we're going alphabetical order here. We've got the Alfred Hitchcock, The Essentials Collection. I don't know if they're necessarily essentials, if you will, you know, in the, you know, artistic quality standpoint, you know, I would say maybe like, there are some Hitchcock movies in this collection that I like less than others. You know, I'm partial, I'm partial to Dial M for Murder myself, as well as Rope. But there are some awesome movies in here. This is essentially like a collection of his most popular works. You know, you've got a uh, Rear Window, Vertigo, North by Northwest, Psycho, and The Birds in here. Which, you know, that's a pretty solid mix of films. I'd say if you're new to Alfred Hitchcock, that's like a good starting point to go with. And yeah, that's pretty cool packaging. You know, you've got like uh, production info on each of the movies that's featured in here, as well as a special disc, as well as artwork behind every single disc as well. So I'd say that's a pretty cool little collection here. Definitely worth checking out if you want to, if you haven't really watched many of Hitchcock's movies and you want to get into more. Oh man, this is a beefy one. This one is Apocalypse Now, the final cut. Um, I've actually only seen Apocalypse Now once, and that was the final cut. And what that is, it's a three hour cut of the film. The theatrical is like two and a half hours, so this one's no much longer. Um, overseen by Francis Ford Coppola himself. I saw the final cut, uh, I want to say like fall of 2019, so it's been almost five years now. And I bought this 4K edition very shortly after, I think at Best Buy. And it's crazy. This thing is six discs. Six discs for one freaking movie. And from what I can tell here, you know, you've got a 4K of the final cut, just a regular old Blu-ray. You have Blu-rays of both of those versions as well. Um, and then you have just a whole bunch of special features on there as well, including... It includes also Hearts of Darkness, a filmmaker's apocalypse which is a, a documentary about the making of this movie, which apparently was a very hellish experience for everyone involved. So if you love Apocalypse Now, this is definitely a very worthwhile package to get, especially for that art. I mean, just look at that. All right, this next one's gonna be a twofer. This, for this one, I have Avatar, as well as Avatar The Way of Water. And yeah, both of these movies are, are pretty good. Way of Water is better in my opinion, but I think they're both worth having like these collectible editions on. This was a first edition um, extended cut collector's edition thing. It's got this cool package with, uh, you know, sort of a Blu-ray book style case in it. And in here you have like all this special artwork that's in the Navi language. Whole bunch of special features. Um, it's got the movie with some extended scenes in it. And then the one for uh, The Way of Water. Oh, I think I'm showing it backwards. Sorry. Uh, the one for Way of Water. This is just a Best Buy 4K steelbook. Um, See, so yeah, it's got the movie in there with special features. So pretty cool there. Good movies. Speaking of Avatar, I also have Avatar. <laughs> uh, I mean, what... What hasn't been said about this show? It's one of the greatest TV shows of all time. Like, if you haven't seen this, it, it, what are you doing, man? <laughs> Watch this TV show if you haven't. And if you have seen it, this is definitely a collection you need to own. And I'm very grateful that I do have this because um, I showed this series to my wife for the first time last year. Um, I always kind of bugged her about it and told her how great it was. And I showed it to her and she agrees. Next up, we have something that should be essential for any movie lover, and that is the Back to the Future trilogy. Um, this edition, there are a lot of different editions of the Back to the Future trilogy. This one in particular is the 25th anniversary trilogy, which I believe was issued in like 2010. Um, so it's kind of a standard edition. You, know, you just have a, a Blu-ray copy of each of the three movies, nothing too special there. But hey, I mean, it gets the job done. All right, and then I talked about this in my favorite movies slash miniseries of 2022 video, at least like, you know, older things. But yes, Band of Brothers. This is essential for anyone who enjoys war stories. Um, and even if you're not really a fan of them, I think this is worth seeing as well because it's 
definitely a top tier production as far as, you know, I mean, war film, that's a mini series, but you know what I mean, as far as that is concerned. All right, and I got a couple Batman related things here. The first one that I'll show you is the Dark Knight trilogy with this awesome package that is included in here. It has all three movies, as you might guess, but it has this nice textured artwork um, packaging here with the Batman logo on the back. And this one also includes a little art book. Um, this one right here, you know, it has the villains on the back. And you can slip th flip through and it has all these production stills and some, um, some information about the production and the artwork and everything. So very cool. You know, if you're a fan of Christopher Nolan and these movies especially, I think this is definitely worth picking up. And then my other collectible case for a Batman movie is for The Batman. And I think this is definitely one of the cooler uh, steelbooks that I have. I mean, just from the artwork alone. I mean, that's just so good. You know, the combination of Battenson and the question mark there. So that's really nice. And the back cover. I don't know, I'm a sucker for black and red. That's a good combo there. Um, and that includes a 4K disc as well as a Blu-ray version of the movie and then some special features, I believe. Yep, special features. Another uh, another Best Buy edition. And by the way, Best Buy, you suck for no longer selling Blu-rays. I just want you to know that. But anyway, moving on from that, we have our first Criterion set here. This is for the Before Trilogy by Richard Linklater. In my personal opinion, I think this is the single greatest trilogy of movies ever made. There is another trilogy that I will feature in this video that I personally like more, but I'll share my thoughts on that later. But yeah, this one is great. This is a series of romance, I don't know if I would call them dramas, but you know, romance movies that all take place nine years apart from each other. And they were also released nine years apart from each other. So it's kind of has this cool effect where you're, um, you know, you're sort of growing along with these characters in real time. And one thing I like about this edition in particular is that each and every movie has their own case that has like special artwork in it. Um, the first movie, this is Before Sunrise. Uh, sorry, I'm just trying to make sure this stuff doesn't fall out. Uh, Before Sunset, the first sequel. And then Before Midnight, the finale to the trilogy. And yeah, all of these films are 10 out of 10 masterpieces. Like, if you haven't seen these, these... These are absolutely essential. And the Criterion packaging is pretty nice too. And now we have our first of what I like to call the comic book art steelbooks. Um, this one in particular being for the Born Identity. And so that's just a style of artwork for various um, steelbook editions that were released by Universal. I bought this at a used, used game store. It was dirt cheap from what I remember. I don't have the editions for the other two movies in the Born trilogy. And yes, I did say Born Trilogy, because the fourth and fifth movies do not matter, in my opinion. I'm sorry. Um, will I ever get the second and third movies? Maybe, but it's not a priority for me right now. As it stands, cool addition for a very good movie. All right, we have our next criterion, which this one might surprise you, but I've got one for The Breakfast Club. Not my favorite movie from John Hughes, um, but, you know... I like it enough to, to have bought it at Zia Records, which is a local physical media chain here in the Phoenix Valley. And yeah, I mean, since there was a Criterion Edition, I figured, why not? I might as well. I mean, it comes with special features on there as well, as these Criterion Editions usually do. You know, it's not just a booklet with like scene selections in it. It also has like, um, it has essays, it has behind the scenes information. You know, they go all, out, go all out with these editions, so I figured, why not, you know? All right, we got another steel book, and that would be for Catch Me If You Can. I absolutely love this movie, um, and for the longest time, I had such a difficult time finding this movie at physical media stores. I wasn't really sure why, and so when I found out that it was being released on Steelbook, especially with art as cool as this, I figured that was my opportunity to pick it up, and so I'm glad that I did because this movie deserves um, having the steelbook treatment for it. All right, coming up, we have another Criterion. This is Charade, directed by Stanley Donnan, who also directed 
um, Singing in the Rain with Gene Kelly. This particular movie is kind of like the best Hitchcock movie that Hitchcock never made, at least, you know, from that era, like the 60s. And as Cary Grant and Audrey Hepburn, definitely worth checking out if you like both of those actors, as well as that kind of style of, you know, comedic, but still very serious sort of thriller, caper sort of thing. Very fun movie. Check it out. All right. And now for an absolute personal favorite of mine, we've got A Christmas Story. I have wanted to make a video about A Christmas Story for a very long time now. Maybe I will at some point. Who knows? I have to kind of find like the right hook for it. But this has been very near and dear to my heart since I was a kid. And I originally did have just a standard Blu-ray edition of this, but then when I saw a steelbook at um, a used media st store one day, I figured that's one I need to have on steelbook. So here we are. All right, coming at you with another criterion here. We have the 4K edition of Citizen Kane. This is a movie that I definitely love. It is worth having its greatest of all time status. Um, but for the longest time, it was sitting on my... Uh, Blu-ray wish list, and then when I saw that a 4K Criterion Edition was being released, I figured that was the perfect opportunity to get it. I think this one in particular I got at one of the 50% off Barnes & Noble sales, and that was probably the wise choice because despite how much I love this movie, I think paying 50 bucks MSRP for this thing would have been a bit ridiculous. So $25 is a bit more reasonable, um, and yeah, just like any other uh, steel, any other Criterion release would, you know, it has that really cool packaging in it. And I like that it kind of spells out Kane's name as you fold it out like that. Yeah, very cool addition. All right, coming at you with another Criterion movie for a film that is quite old, City Lights by Charlie Chaplin. I've only seen a couple of movies by the great silent actor, or silent comedian, I should say, by the Charlie Chaplin, but I think out of the ones I have seen, this is the one that I prefer. Just more of a simple, classic, romantic comedy that ends on a very positive note. If you've never seen a silent movie before, I would say this is a very good entry point. Um, very funny, awesome gags, has a very heartwarming story to it. And yeah, it was, it's one of those movies that'll leave a genuine smile on your face. Now, this next one is a movie that I'm not like huge on. I bought it more so for my wife to have it in our collection, but I have a Steelbook edition for Clueless. I bought this during the pandemic when the two of us were watching movies, you know, trying to catch up with a lot of older movies that I'd never seen before because we all know that a lot of new stuff didn't come out that year. Good stuff still did still come out, the likes of which we'll talk about later, but, you know, I wanted to make sure I got this because, you know, we watched the movie, we both liked it, and I saw that this edition was coming out with this perfectly patterned Blu-ray matching, um, crap, I forgot the main character's name, <laughs> Alicia Silverstone's uh, costuming here, so I thought that worked out just nicely. Pretty standard edition though, it's just a single Blu-ray disc, but very cool packaging nonetheless. Now this next one is the first of two movies in our collection that are part of something called the Paramount Presents series. Um, which are standard Blu-ray discs, but are part of just like a collectible series for older films that sort of have a really nice reputation. And that is The Court Jester. This is another one that I bought primarily for my wife. I think this in particular was a Christmas gift for her because she really loves this movie. And it's one that she introduced to me since we've been married. It features Danny Kaye, as well as the late Angela Lansbury in a supporting role there. Um, you know, she's kind of a screwball comedy set in medieval times and well probably more so like renaissance era rather than like medieval medieval times like the middle ages but yeah it's a fun little movie i think if you're looking for something different for your family to watch this could be a yeah this could be a good little romp for that now all of you weebs out there are gonna enjoy this next one i'm hitting you with cowboy bebop the complete series and again, like, if you like anime, I mean, this is just an essential purchase. Like, you know, obviously, it's... And it's also a very doable series in terms of how long it is. Like, it's only 20... I think only 26 episodes long. And they're all great. You know, it's a very, very enjoyable sort of episodic um, 
sort of adventure of the week type of sci-fi adventure series in the vein of something like Firefly, if you've ever seen that. Um, yeah, definitely essential. And I really loved the Cowboy Bebop movie as well, which we saw earlier this year. I'm hoping to buy a Blu-ray of that as well. All right, we're back at it with the blue with the steel books for this next one. We've got Dances with Wolves. Now, I've only seen this once. I think I was like 14 or 15 when my parents first showed it to me. This uh, epic three-hour-plus-long uh, western that was directed by Kevin Costner and won Best Picture at the Oscars. So it's been a while since I've seen it. I don't exactly remember what my thoughts on it would be, but. I do remember liking it enough to say, like, yeah, I'd be willing to buy a steelbook of that. This particular edition has, uh, has a good amount of stuff in here. It's got the theatrical cut. Uh, and if you didn't already think this movie was long enough, there is an extended cut here. And then you're just a Blu-ray for special features as well. So, very feature-packed, this steelbook. Hitting you again with that anime love, we've got Death Note, another excellent series that is not a huge time commitment. This one is 30 up. Sorry, this one is 37 episodes long. Um, and yeah, if you're not really sure of what Death Note is, it's kind of hard to like really pinpoint what a genre this would belong to. It's like a cop procedural, but also like a serial killer story. There's also elements of comedy in there. Um, yeah, just a really great story. Um, one that I would suggest going in blind if you don't really know like the basic premise of it, because... It is extremely interesting and one of the more unique stories that you could find out there. It's also pretty good as like gateway anime too, which is a term that we use for anyone who isn't really familiar with anime but wants to get into it. This is a great series for that, as well as Cowboy Bebop too. All right, sticking with stuff that comes from East Asia, we have Decision to Leave, which was one of my favorite movies, uh, favorite new movies, I should say, of 2022. Um, and this is a standard Blu-ray case, but I'm including it in this video because it's a special release from Mubi, a streaming service that kind of curates um, a lot of different kinds of unique and international and, you know, art house cinema, but also served as distributor for this movie. And yeah, um, I would say that this movie is worth checking out for a lot of reasons, most especially for the fact that it's kind of like director Park Chan-wook channeling of, um, his own sensibilities in a, like a Hitchcock type of way. And yeah, it definitely is a very Hitchcockian thriller from a, you know, from a thriller standpoint, but also in terms of like the romantic elements of, of Vertigo. It's very reminiscent of that. And so yeah, very, very great movie. Um, check it out if you haven't. Oh boy, we're getting into a real film bro favorite here. We've got Django Unchained. Um, Funny thing about this edition, um, I actually bought this edition at a used media store called The House of Used before I had even seen it. Um, I took a gamble on this. That's something I usually don't do. Like, I'll usually only buy a movie on Blu-ray if I know that I actually like it. I want to rewatch it again. In this case, you know, I saw it while browsing the store and I'm like, I probably will like this. I like Quentin Tarantino. So I bought it. I watched it. Confirmed that it's awesome. <laughs> So that is why I still own it. Got another Criterion Edition here, this one being Do the Right Thing. And this one is, this one's interesting to me because this isn't a movie that I would like quickly rewatch again just because it is pretty depressing. You know, it's not a film that will certainly put you in a great mood, but it is essential viewing, you know, for contemporary American cinema. It's definitely one of the classics of the modern era, semi-modern. I mean, it came out in the late 80s. Um, but yeah, I watched this originally for uh, a race and sexuality course in film, or a race and sexuality in film course at ASU for my final semester there. And it left a lasting impact on me ever since first watching it, enough to where at another 50% off sale at Barnes & Noble, I picked up this edition and yeah, I mean, just judged on the artwork alone and then the the package we've got here, I think that was a very worthwhile decision that I made. Also a great movie to watch during the summertime. So if you've never watched it, this is probably a good time to do it. Maybe before it gets really, really hot because like char the characters feeling hot and sweaty is something that pervades the whole entire movie and even plays into the 
metaphors of it all. So if you're watching this on a sweaty day, you're gonna get like a, a 4D experience, if you will. So be mindful of that. Okay, another film bro favorite we've got here. This is Drive by Nicholas Winding Refn. Um, and this is another one that I haven't seen in a very long time. Uh, probably not since 2013, I think. But I remember it loving it enough to consider it my favorite movie of 2011 at the time. I would need to revisit it before I actually confirm if it is. But as of now, awesome movie. Um, one of the highlights of Ryan Gosling's career, as you can see on this case. Um, and yeah, definitely a very stylish looking steelbook. That combination of black and pink. Man, black just goes well with a lot of stuff, doesn't it? But, like, black and pink in particular? Mmm, so good. Alright, and one of the more recent movies that I bought on Steelbook, this is Dungeons & Dragons Honor Among Thieves. Um, I liken this to, basically, um, a gamer's version of The Princess Bride. You know, it harbors a lot of those same sensibilities where it's taking the fantasy genre, but being very playful and very fun with it you know this is a very funny movie one that i think you could pop on the tv with a group of friends over and just have a blast with kind of like a game of dnd &D itself um which i think is very cool that they've been able to channel that energy of the game into the movie in such a efficient and palpable way and i wanted to make sure i bought a 4k steel book of this because this movie did not do well in theaters which is a darn shame and so I figured, why not support the studio better by actually buying one of their, you know, less popular movies at the box office on Steelbook and showing that this needs a better shelf life, you know? And that's, that's what I did. Up next, we have one of my most treasured movies in my whole collection. And the first, and not last, appearance of a Wes Anderson movie, and that is Fantastic Mr. Fox. This right here is what turned me into the ravenous movie fan that I am today. Like, 2009 was the year that I pretty much discovered that I have, like, a serious love for the art form. And I even started writing reviews, and I even got one published in the Arizona Republic at the time for G-Force, of all things. <laughs> um, but when I watched Fantastic Mr. Fox with my siblings and my cousin, um, back in 2009, around, uh, it might have been Thanksgiving Day, actually. Man, just like, the way that it turned me into just a movie fan that wanted to know everything about the process of making movies, you know, going to independent films, you know, supporting that kind of style of cinema. And to this day, it's still just a hilarious, wild ride that I will always treasure. Enough to where I figured that not having a Criterion Edition would be a travesty. So here you go, that's why I have this. You know, I brought up Firefly earlier and that was intentional because it was gonna show up eventually. I've got the complete series of Firefly here, um, as well as Serenity, which is the film that they made um, a, a couple years after the show's cancellation, a very untimely cancellation at that. Um, yeah, this, this show was cut way, way short you know, it's only like 12 or 13 episodes um, that all aired in 2002. Um, and so Joss Whedon's vision for this show, you know, sort of like a, a cowboy western in space, was never fully realized. But this film, uh, Serenity, which serves as a continuation and a true, tried and true finale for the show, very satisfying, um, a very good movie from what I can remember. One of the better films of 2005. And they complement each other very well. And I'm glad that I found the Steelbook edition because it just, it feels fitting, you know, for a movie that did what the show wasn't able to do, which is wrap things up. All right. Um, and I also have a couple of video games to show you, a couple that I have on a Steelbook edition. And this is the first of those, which is Ghost of Tsushima. I don't know how well the artwork of this is going to translate on the, on the footage you're watching, but... Yes, a very cool addition. Um, this is another one that I took a gamble on. You know, um, I actually bought this brand new at GameStop when it first released back in July of 2020. Um, but all the preview footage looks super promising. All the gameplay looked great. And I'm glad that I bought the Steel Edition because I platinumed this game. 
and it is awesome. It was one of my favorite games from that year, and it is certainly a game that I will treasure, one that I look forward to replaying at some point. All right, and now we've got the first and not last appearance of a David Fincher movie, and that would be The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Um, I have not seen the original um, film starring Numi Rapace, as well as Michael Nickfist. Sorry if I mispronounced that name. But this one is its own beast, um, one that is worth watching on its own. Um, and this special edition features um, both of the main characters with portrait shots like this, as well as all these fancy discs. I feel like David Fincher releases on Blu-ray are always pretty good, and this one in particular has a lot of style to it, just like the movie itself does. An awesome modern uh, detective thriller, if you haven't seen this. Very worthwhile. All right, back to the Criterions, and this one in particular is for Godzilla, or as the original Japanese title would say, Gojira. Um, and yeah, this is the 1954 original, so this year we are celebrating its 70th anniversary. And man, what an awesome monster movie this is. Like, you know, I haven't seen the, the other Tojo movies, so I can't really speak to their quality, but, you know, you look at those movies and you see kind of how corny they are and how much they lean into the, the cheesiness of it, which is fine in its own right, but this movie set such a strong standard for monster movies to come. You know, like, you watch this film and sure, you can see the, the guy in the suit wandering around and beating up buildings and stuff, but... There's such a strong emotional undercurrent to what happens in the story. You know, so much regret and pain from World War II, like the atomic bombings especially, that gets channeled into this allegory for all of that. And yeah, it's it's really something else. Like if you haven't seen this original version of Godzilla, it is worth... You can understand why this character has endured for seven decades so far, and why... Even to this day, you know, with like Godzilla Minus One, which I really hope gets a 4K release here in the States. But yeah, why that movie was able to channel the same energy as this one and be a modern blockbuster that, you know, really sh blew people away just like this one did. Um, but yeah, awesome Criterion release after watching it for the first time back in 2019. I knew that I had to have this. All right, next up, we have another Wes Anderson joint. We got the Grand Budapest Hotel. Another one that I originally did have just a standard Blu-ray for, but there came a point in which I realized that, you know, a lot of these Wes Anderson movies have such awesome artwork to them for the Criterion editions that I wanted to, um, I wanted to upgrade, if you will. And this one I was able to find at a pretty good price. Um, so here you are, one of Wes Anderson's better movies. Another Criterion that I have is The Beatles, A Hard Day's Night. And... Me being such a huge Beatles fan, I mean, I do have a Beatles shirt that I could have worn, but decided not to. Um, but yeah, I'm a huge fan of this band and also a huge fan of this movie. And so I figured this would be essential as well. And I received this as a Christmas gift. I don't remember how many years ago it was, but I mean, look at just how big this edition is. Like, you know, you got the fancy artwork as usual and a huge booklet. And then, yeah, multiple discs on here. Um, I'm very glad that I own this one because this is a treasure for someone like me who is a massive fan of this band. And here we've got the other Paramount Selects edition. Um, we've got Harold and Maude. I could have gotten the Criterion of this, but after seeing that this edition was coming out and was cheaper than the Criterion, I'm like, yeah, sure, I guess I'll get this one. And this one was a Christmas gift as well, just like how the Court Jester was one for my wife. And if you haven't seen this, this is a, a very quirky comedy, f dark comedy for sure, from the early 70s, in which, uh, in which there's a, a young guy who's constantly just trying to off himself. I can't say the actual word, f or I might get demonetized, um, or otherwise. And then the same guy essentially falls in love with an older lady. Um, that's a very oversimplified version of the story, but... Very funny, very quirky, and um, if you want to get into some sort of offbeat stuff from the 70s, this is a good place to start. Now we've got another steelbook coming, uh, this one being for Howl's Moving Castle. Now, I find it kind of funny that this is the only Hayao Miyazaki movie I own on steelbook because, hot take, this is actually my least favorite movie of his. 
it's still good. Like I still like enjoy watching this movie, but I, I don't know, man. There's like there's so much going on with it, and it jumps around so much that it just kind of has an incoherent story to it. Why I have a steel book, I can't tell you. Um, but you know, worth having nonetheless. And you know, it's got very pleasant artwork to it, and it's got a nice solid color, a nice sheen to the the case, if you will. So I don't regret buying it. Now, a steel book that I absolutely do not regret buying is Inception. And I found this at a used media store as well once. And I mean, what hasn't already been said about Inception? It's, it's incredible. It's great. Um, if I was to tell you right now what my favorite movies of 2010 were, this would probably be my number one. I have to watch more movies from that year to really say like definitively what that be, would be. But right now that is my number one right here. Just a modern classic of the action and sci-fi genre. Kind of a disappointing showing for the, the discs. It's just a standard single disc Blu-ray. But at least I have a steelbook to show my friends that this is a movie that's very special to me. All right, and now I've got the Indiana Jones, uh, the complete adventure set. Um, this was issued in 2012, um, a year after the Star Wars Complete Saga edition. And I'm comfortable with this set, including the first four movies, um, because the fifth one was bad and pointless enough to where I refuse to acknowledge its existence. <laughs> so I am comfortable just having these four movies, including the Christ Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, because at least Kingdom of the Crystal Skull ends on a good, happy note. You know, I would argue that Last Crusade has a better ending, but at least, you know, where Indiana Jones ends up in the fourth one is a nice note to end on. And so I'm okay with this set, and you know, obviously, great artwork here, um, awesome packaging, and it has all four movies, as well as a special features disc. So, as a fan of Indiana Jones, I am very glad that I have this. Now, this next set is definitely one of the coolest things that I own, and this is Cartoon Saloon's Irish Folklore Trilogy. Now, you might be like, what the heck is that? And I'm glad I could tell you. So... Cartoon Saloon is an animation studio based in Ireland, hence the name, Irish Folklore Trilogy. And this, these three movies are not a trilogy in the traditional sense, that they're like a chronological, sequential order type of storyline. They're just three separate stories that are based in Irish folklore. But all three of these movies are great. Uh, the, Secret of, uh, the Secret of Kells. Um, shoot, what was this one called again? <laughs> Um, Song of the Sea. Yes, sorry. I had the cheat sheet. And then Wolf Walkers. Um, Wolf Walkers is my personal favorite of those three. It was one of my favorite films of 2020. And one of my favorite films of the decade so far as well. Certainly among the animated movies. And yeah, these all have a very striking um, 2D animation style to them. Um, and they're all very emotive, very thematically challenging movies that I think anyone in your family would enjoy. All right, next we have It Happened One Night. Um, this movie is um, a film from Frank Capra, who has directed some of my absolute favorite movies ever. And this one is also very good. Not quite as beloved, in my opinion, as the other ones that I've seen. But this one is its own beast in its own right, certainly. Um, the prototype of the romantic comedy. Um, yeah, if you haven't seen this, it's very fun. I think this year actually marks its... 80th anniversary? Yeah, released in, uh, no, yeah, released in 1934, so this is actually its 90th anniversary this year, and in a lot of ways it feels kind of ahead of its time, um, especially for the year that it came out, so a very fun movie, definitely worth checking out. Okay, um, now I am a big fan of the James Bond franchise, I have seen every single movie in that series, but the only one that I own on Steelbook is Skyfall, and the primary reason for that is because it is my favorite out of all of them. It is definitely the best, although Casino Royale is not far behind. And so if I ever do get a steelbook edition of that one, that is probably the one James Bond movie I would fork over the money for. Needless to say, um, absolutely love Skyfall. Um, this one would most definitely be my favorite movie of 2012 out of the ones I've seen, if I was to make that list. And it is definitely an essential watch for anyone who 
loves James Bond and action movies in general. Another action series that I love is John Wick. The only one that I own on Steelbook though is Chapter 3, um, which you can't really tell from the artwork alone, but still cool artwork in general. You know, you have this sort of like um, throw paint at the wall and see what sticks sort of style going on here. Um, but that's very clearly Keanu Reeves in his John Wick getup. And it features uh, both the Blu-ray and the 4K movies here in the case. So this was another uh, Best Buy purchase. Um, again, screw you Best Buy. But thank you for selling this edition when it came out. All right, guys, we are about halfway through. So for anyone who is still sticking around, I appreciate you. All right, we got another uh, Wes Anderson release here with The Life Aquatic with Steve Zissou. This one is kind of a controversial pick among his movies. And frankly, I don't really understand why. Like, I think this is a very underrated film of his. Um, very strong comedic piece, um, but also a very emotional one at that with some very striking cinematography, some very good character work, especially with um, Bill Murray's character, Steve Zissou himself. And the ending is also a very strong endpoint for one of his movies as well. And just like all of uh, Wes Anderson's movies on Criterion, you know, great special features, very great treatment therein. And fun fact about um, these editions of his movies in particular, the artwork is done by Eric Chase Anderson, who is Wes Anderson's brother. And that guy also voiced Christopherson in Fantastic Mr. Fox. So those two definitely have a very good working relationship out of being, you know, brothers, which I think is kind of cool. Okay, remember when I talked about the Before Trilogy and said that there was a trilogy that I also loved just as much? Um, yeah, that would be the Lord of the Rings trilogy, which, I mean, come on, like, it, it's essential for any movie lover to have this to some capacity. Am I disappointed that the 4K edition of this trilogy does not have the packaging that the original Blu-ray release of the extended editions didn't? Yeah, sure. I am pretty disappointed in that, but... To just have these movies in 4K in their best possible version, that's what matters to me the most. So I'm glad that I at least have this, you know, for that reason. All right, this is the only film in my collection that is a 4K edition straight from the manufacturer themselves, or the studio, I should say, in which I've got Marcel with the shoe. Uh, sorry, Marcel the shell with shoes on. One of my absolute favorite movies of 2022. And another one of those animated movies that I would consider to be among the best of the decade. Um, a lot has been said about this movie. It's a very humble and simple little film um, for a family type of audience that I think everyone should watch, especially for young kids that are starting to develop like their emotional intelligence. There's a lot of great themes in there that I think they could benefit from. It's a very sweet, very genuine, heartwarming movie that pretty much brought me to tears both times I've seen it, which is, for me, that's like a very strong compliment. Like I rarely cry when it comes to movies. And so for this one to do that, you know, it wasn't emotionally manipulative. Like the, those emotions were earned for sure. And that is why I forked over the money to have an edition as exclusive as this one. All right, this one is unique because this is for a movie that actually is a Netflix original. But I have a criterion for a marriage story, one of my favorite films of 2019, the year that came out. Um, the funny thing about that too is like, I never actually watched this movie on Netflix proper. Um, I actually went out to a theater to see this um, a, a couple weeks before Christmas. Um, I went to the Camel View, which was featured in my, uh, my Phoenix Movie Theaters video. So I saw that there. And then when I found out that Criterion was making a was releasing a Blu-ray edition of this, I ordered that. So I do not have need to watch this on Netflix because I have this. All right, now there have been many editions of The Matrix, but the one that I own is this one, which is sort of like a Blu-ray book. I think that's what they call them. But yeah, you open this up and there's like a little uh, booklet that's just kind of sewn into the spine of the case itself. And of course you have the movie there as well. I mean, another one of those movies that has been talked to death about, The Matrix, is an absolute classic of both the action and sci-fi genres, rightfully so, and I am glad that I have this edition because it feels like 
it is becoming of the movie's reputation. All right, another movie that I saw in 2020 in theaters, actually, you know, when no other new movies were coming out, that is Memories of Murder, which is from acclaimed Korean director Bong Joon-ho. Um, so this is another one of those things where I saw it in a theater, and then I f found out soon after that a Criterion edition was in the works, and so I pre-ordered that from Amazon, and then I was lucky enough to get that soon after. And this one is absolutely terrific. Like, um, if you can essentially imagine, like, um, Zodiac, but, like, a Korean version of that, especially for the fact that it's based on a true story, like, that's pretty much what you get here. Like, it's pretty much cut of the same cloth as David Fincher's movie. Well, actually, this came before that, but anyway. Um, if you love Zodiac and you love the vibe that that had, Memories of Murder will be right up your alley. Amazing movie. All right, and this is the other Frank Capra classic that I have in my collection. This one is definitely a 10 out of 10 for me, and that is Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. This is one of those movies that you show somebody and tell them, like, you know, if you hate, like, black and white movies, you're missing out because this is one of the most compelling dramas that I have ever seen, which um, the sad part about it is, you know, it's about a... It's about a young senator who goes out to Washington to lobby for his representatives. And it sucks that it's themes of like corruption and politicians being paid off for like, you know, um, for nefarious reasons still holds up to this day. And I think people on any side of the political spectrum could really get behind what this movie is saying. But beyond its political messaging, it's just a very strong story in particular um, with an awesome performance from Jimmy Stewart, my favorite actor. And I th I'm glad that I have this very nice 75th edition Blu-ray book that kind of like The Matrix has all this, uh, all these bells and whistles and like video um, essays and stuff. So yeah, terrific movie. If you have not seen Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, this is an absolute classic of the 1930s. All right, we've got the last of those Universal Studios uh, comic book art steelbooks, and that is The Mummy. Um, as you can see here, he, uh, sorry, as you can see here, I bought this used um, at Zio Records for the wonderful price of $9.99. Um, that's another one that I bought more so for my wife because she's a bigger fan of it than I am. But I mean, yeah, since she already wanted it anyway, and I saw that the steelbook edition was cheap, I figured, why not, you know? Um, very fun to watch for seeing, um, classic era, um, Brendan Fraser. I'm glad that guy's having a comeback because he deserves it. All right, this next box set is cool. This is the Oceans Trilogy Collection, um, a big box set that includes all three of Steven Soderbergh's Oceans movies here in this case. You'll notice this right here as well. And what that it was is it contained these this little uh, set of playing cards that came with the Blu-ray box that we bought. Um, and yeah, these, these cards are really fun as well. We've actually used these for some card games that we played with each other, as um, my wife and I, as well as our in-laws and friends. Um, so that's another bonus that we got from here. But otherwise, just a cool box set for a very suave uh, trilogy of movies that I bought uh, several years ago. So glad to own these. Very fun films. All right, now in uh, 2019, there were a lot of movies I watched where like, once I realized how good they were, I bought them on 4K Steelbook at Best Buy, pretty much the day that they were made available. And the same is the case for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood by Quentin Tarantino. I have not seen this since first uh, seeing it in a theater in 35 millimeter, actually. That was a cool experience, but um. Yeah, I remember enjoying this quite a lot, um, so I look forward to watching this eventually. And I am grateful that I have this edition just because of the design of it. It's very sleek, and it features all of the main characters in the front as well, including including this little girly. So, um, yeah, very fun film, and I look forward to seeing Quentin Tarantino's next movie whenever that comes out. Okay, I've got another one there for all you weebs. I've got uh, season one of One Punch Man. Um, and yeah, this one is absolutely awesome. Probably more for people who are already into anime. It's a little bit more on the, the crazy action-packed shonen side of things. But um, yeah, very fun. 
don't watch season two, just watch this. It's a good little compact four hour uh, mini series of just awesome superhero stuff. And um, I think it's a breath of fresh air compared to the other superhero stuff we've got in the past decade as well, particularly because of its main character and all that he's about. Um, so this is a very fun series. And um, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's great. I, I think everyone who's seen One Punch Man knows how awesome it is. So check it out. All right, this is the other Bong Joon-ho movie that I'm featuring on this uh, video. And funny enough, it's also a Criterion release and that is Parasite. Now, this being my favorite film of 2019, I did buy the original Blu-ray version as soon as it was, it was available in stores. But then later that same year in 2020, when the Criterion Edition was announced, I'm like, nope, I am trading in that old version and I am getting this. And I am glad I did just because you know you got the awesome artwork. And also because like, yeah, it, it's a modern classic. Like, you know, I got to show my love for it by getting this awesome edition. Um, so I bought it on Amazon pretty much as soon as it was available. And yeah, that's Parasite. And now me being the fan of Peanuts that I am, um, which is a very big fan, I should say, um, I wanted to show off my Peanuts holiday collection, which includes um, a Charlie Brown Christmas, a Charlie Brown Thanksgiving, and it's the Great Pumpkin Charlie Brown, all in one case. All very essential Charlie Brown specials, in my opinion. And it also includes some bonus episodes on each disc as well, so that's a nice little uh, bonus there. And so I look forward to sharing this with my kids once they're all grown up, because I grew up on these, so did my wife, and of course, you know, my parents did too. So it's a nice kind of a generational thing that I get to pass down. All right, and this is the other video game that I am featuring in this video, and that is Persona 5 Royal. Um, which was my favorite game of that I played in 2022, if you want to check out that video. Now, the unfortunate thing about this steelbook is that I bought it used at GameStop for like, I think, 20 or 30 bucks or something. And I don't know if you can really see it, but there's a pretty nasty dent here on uh, this corner of the case. But it's still functional. You know, it still served its purpose, and it's got some awesome artwork of all of the playable characters in the game. And I think what matters to me is that I just have a great addition to the game. Um, the one that you really need to get, you know, don't get the vanilla version, just get Royal. You know, it's the more updated and better version with better gameplay and a more fulfilling story. And yeah, one of the best video games ever made. I'm glad that I have a steelbook of this. All right, and here's one that comes from my very early days of Blu-ray collecting, one of the very first ones that I ever bought. And that is Planet Earth. Um... I mean, this is like the, this is like the, um, Beethoven's Ninth Symphony of Nature documentaries. Like, this is pretty much the essential for anyone who loves that kind of thing. Um, just absolutely immaculate footage that they got of various animals across the globe and the biomes that they're from. And of course you got, uh, the legend David Attenborough doing the narration. So... You can't go wrong with this one, and I am glad that I own it because this will be a great gateway for my uh, gateway for my child to get into nature stuff. So I'm glad I have this. All right, now if you're ever going to get a Criterion edition of something, one that you pretty much can't go wrong with is the Princess Bride. I mean, just look at this thing, like. Just beautiful artwork for a beautiful movie. Um, of course, you got this on the back. That's cool. The nice thing about this, it just has a, such a nice texture to, to feel and touch when you're feeling it. That might sound kind of weird, but like, you know, texture is important with like collectible stuff. And also, who, who doesn't like The Princess Bride, you know? Like, I think anyone who is a fan of this movie would be very pleased to get this as a gift, um, especially for its nice booklet. Um, it's a very nice remastered version of the movie. Um, and yeah, just, it's an awesome collectible item and it kind of embodies everything that the Criterion Edition is all about. Sorry, Criterion Collection is all about. So one of my absolute favorite movies and because of how much I love it, I knew that getting this version would be absolutely essential. And if you wanna start out collecting Criterion Blu-rays, you can't do 
You can't do wrong with this one, baby. So good. All right, here's another one that is more so a collector's item for my wife in particular, but we have both seasons of Pushing Daisies. This is another TV show, kind of like Firefly, that was canceled too soon, which is a shame because these this TV show is actually very fun. It's a detective murder mystery type of show uh, that also features a lot of comedy and is very quirky and fantastical. Basically, the main character, um, this guy, played by Lee Pace, he's, um, he's a guy who possesses the ability to resurrect people by simply touching them. And he uses that gift to be able to, um, to be able to solve crimes and do all that good stuff. But he also owns a pie shop because he'll take like dead fruit and touch it and create like just the most delicious pies you could ever imagine. So, um, yeah, very fun show. If you can catch it on a streaming service, I think this is very worth watching, even though you'll be sad knowing that, you know, this show was cut down in its prime. All right, and here I am featuring a Alfred Hitchcock movie once again. We've got Rebecca. This is a film that he made in 1940, and also a movie that won him the Oscar for Best Picture. One that not a lot of people talk about when they talk about Alfred Hitchcock, but I think it is definitely among his best films. Um, and I think you really just kind of have to look into it and see what it's all about because there's a lot of interesting mysteries that are involved with this um, psychodrama. So um, a black and white picture, so that might be a barrier of entry for some, but very compelling story if you're willing to get behind it. And um, yeah, it's great. Up next, I have a movie that is certainly much different than Rebecca, but is great in its own right. And that is Robocop. I was, I first saw this in a theater back in 2021, I think it was. Um, as part of the Tuesday Night Classic series at Harkins Theaters. Um, I originally thought about getting the, the Arrow version of this movie, but that would that would have been like 40 bucks at Barnes & Noble, and I'm like, I don't know. But um, I saw this version for less than 10 bucks at a used media store, and obviously I'm a sucker for steelbooks, and a steelbook, not only a steelbook, but also one for a good movie. And so I figured, that was the edition I was going to get, so here we are. All right, I've got a couple more uh, Wes Anderson movies here for you. Uh, the first of them being The Royal Tenenbaums, which I think next to Fantastic Mr. Fox is his best movie. Um, his best live action movie, I would say. Um, and I know if my brother was watching this, he would probably agree with me. Um, thank you again, Ty, for introducing me to Wes Anderson. Love you for that. Um, well, yeah, uh, this one is absolutely a classic. Um, I think this is one of the last movies he made before he started getting a lot quirkier with his work. This one definitely has like the hallmarks of Wes Anderson's style in there. You know, you can watch them and definitely know that he made it, but it's still very grounded, um, you know, very funny, but also has a very strong emotional undercurrent to it. So um, yeah, one of his best movies um, and a great way to get familiar with his work if you want to start watching his stuff. And another one of his movies that I that is still um, very grounded, just like Royal Tenenbaums is, but might be a little bit harder for some to get into is Rushmore. This one being uh, the start to Jason Schwartzman's career. And also um, Wes Anderson co-wrote this with his buddy uh, Owen Wilson. So I think that's kind of cool about that as well. Um, I would say this is the movie that really kickstarted Wes Anderson's career as a director as well. And um, yeah, it's funny and compelling in its own right, and it has a lot of great scenes in it. So this one is also worth checking out if you want to get into Wes Anderson stuff. And actually, I lied about the Universal Studios steelbook things because I actually forgot that I had this in my collection, uh, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. Um, I haven't finished reading the, the original series. Um, you know, the original comic book series. But from what I've read so far, it's actually very faithful, um, this movie, to what Brian Lee O'Malley wrote. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's Edgar Wright. I mean, he's obviously an awesome director, and his style very much was appropriate for what they were going for here and adapting that story to the big screen. And it's a cult classic for a reason. You know, if you haven't seen this, if you're a gamer especially, like this movie is essentially made for you. <laughs> Uh, but I think anyone can get into it as well. As well, It's got action, awesome action sequences. A lot of actors in here that you'll watch and be like, hey, I know that guy or that girl. 
in some cases. Um, yeah, very funny as well, very heartwarming. Um, and Scott Pilgrim himself is a douchebag. So, <laughs> um, yeah, great movie. Check it out. Okay, I am ashamed to say that this is the only Akira Kurosawa movie that I have in my collection. But if I was to have any, it would have to be Seven Samurai. You know, his absolute magnum opus, his most popular film, I would say. Um, and certainly one of his most influential. I mean, there are a lot of films you could point to that are either rip-offs or remakes or homages to this film one way or the other. And for good reason. You know, this three and a half hour long samurai epic has some groundbreaking action sequences in it, but also a great sweeping story about a lot of different characters intersecting into one place and time that demands the best of them. And so, uh, yeah, if you're wanting to get into Japanese cinema, especially uh, the black and white era, where a lot of great classic, influential classics came from, Seven Samurai is a great entry point for that. Um, and the Criterion Edition is just gorgeous. I mean, look at that. Gotta love that packaging, so good. All right, these next two are again, ones that I mainly got for my wife. Um, but I'm a fan of these movies as well, to an extent. Um, they're fun enough. Um, the, the Sherlock Holmes movie starring Robert Downey Jr. and Jude Law, directed by Guy Ritchie. And with these movies, I knew that I already needed to pick them up for a collection anyway, but I found them both for like, I don't know, like seven bucks each, like these steelbook editions for seven bucks each at the same store. So I decided to take the plunge and buy them uh, about a year or so ago. And uh, yeah, here they are in our collection. And I really need to rewatch them because it's been a long time. Now here is a steel book that I bought in 2020, brand new, when I found out it was being sold. And one that I am absolutely glad that I bought is The Shining. I mean, what a perfect encapsulation of what this movie's about. I mean, you've got like uh, that signature quote, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy, being repeated over and over again throughout the packaging. And it's organized in a maze-like stretcher, which if you've seen the movie, you know what that's referencing. Um, yeah, an absolute masterpiece, um, an essential from Stanley Kubrick, as well as the horror genre. Um, so, I mean, its reputation precedes it, and so I'm glad that I have a steelbook because it is becoming of the film's reputation that I have this. Speaking of the horror genre and classics that I have defined it, I have the Criterion version of The Silence of the Lambs. Um, for the longest time, I don't know why, but I just hadn't picked up a Blu-ray of this movie, despite loving it. And I'm glad that I have the Criterion version because it's, I don't know, it kind of encapsulates like the cool aspects of the Criterion collection in the sense that like most people hear about Criterion movies and they assume that they're like these stuffy art house movies that only a select number of people are going to get into. But The Silence of the Lambs is like, it's almost kind of like pulpy trash in a way. <laughs> You know, you would think that based on like what the premise is on paper, but it was executed with such technical prowess and, you know, Oscar winning performances from both of its lead actor and actress. Um, and it's just, it's one of those situations where you take a, you take a tried and true story, you know, something that could be filmed by anybody, but it was done with such skill that it got the recognition it deserved. And, uh, is shown to be a true classic of the art form by being presented in a cool edition like this. So I'm glad that I have it for that reason. Okay, we're getting on the home stretch now. You know, I organized all four, I, I organized all my collectible Blu-rays into four rows and we are now on the fourth row. And some of these are gonna be kind of presented in lightning round style, so here we go. Um, this is the other David Fincher film in this particular leg of my collection and that would be uh, The Social Network. I don't know how well you can see that on your screen, um, but that says you don't get to 500 million friends without making a few enemies, which that is a very accurate summary of what that movie is. Um, but you open this up and you have more artwork. You know, you have this with Jesse Eisenberg, as well as many different production stills. And yeah, maybe not quite um, as flashy and as impressive as the Girl with the Dragon Tattoo release, but still glad that I have this edition because it is an absolute masterpiece from David Fincher. 
and one that deserves to have a collectible version for. Okay, got a few more uh, Criterions to show off here. Um, this one is Some Like It Hot, directed by Billy Wilder, and it's got uh, Marilyn Monroe, Tony Curtis, and Jack Lemmon. Um, you know, I think a lot of people from the queer community could say that this is a an early classic um, from the 50s, one that would be ahead of its time, but also just a very fun screwball comedy, a uh, screwball romantic comedy at that, that I think anyone could enjoy. Um, so yeah, if you have never seen this, I think it has a very strong appeal to pretty much anybody. And especially if you are from the queer community, you could really get behind this as well. So yeah, awesome movie and I'm glad that I have it. Okay, and got another criterion here for you. This one is Sound of Metal, which this one was my favorite film of 2020. Um, I don't know why I put off buying this for so long. Like, I loved the movie and really wanted to own it, but I think maybe just, like, the... I, I don't know. Like, Criterions are hard for me in the sense that, like, I really want them, but, you know, most of the time they're, like, 30, 40 bucks. Um, so eventually I just decided to take the plunge, I think, at, like, a 50% off sale and finally got it. And I'm now glad that I do own this because it is such a bold daring film um, that tackles a very serious subject matter but in such a sensitive way. If you've never seen Sound of Metal, it is definitely uh, an overlooked film from that year and one that should have deserved more Oscars than it got. Certainly for, I mean, Riz Ahmed himself, such an awesome performance. All right, and this one is the most recently released film in my collection and that would be Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Um, I sadly don't own one for Into the Spider-Verse. If I'm able to find one, I probably will get one, but as it stands, I have one for Across the Spider-Verse, um, this being another Best Buy uh, Steelbook edition. Um, and yeah, I mean, I've said a lot about Across the Spider-Verse already on this channel in particular, so I won't say much more. Other than that, I really hope the third and final film comes out soon. All right, all of you Trekkies out there are going to appreciate this. I've got the Star Trek Stardate collection. Now, I have not seen all of those Star Trek movies. Um, I've seen most of the Next Generation films, and I've seen the first three from the original series, the ones that have, like, the original uh, TV actors in them. I'd like to get back to that eventually and maybe make a video about that, but as it stands, um, I'm glad that I own this, both for my sake as well as my wife's. And... Yeah, it includes all 10 of those movies, and I also have the the Kelvin trilogy as well, like the USS Kelvin trilogy with, uh, you know, with Chris Pine in it, but those are just standard Blu-rays, so they're not featured here. Otherwise, I'm glad that I have all of these in one awesome collection like this. And right after that, I mean, I've got some good old Star Wars movies for you, which if you didn't see that right there, I mean, you probably never would have guessed that I'm a Star Wars fan, but here we go. This will be a lightning round here because I've already spoken about Star Wars to immense lengths on this channel, so I'm just going to show you the steelbooks themselves. I have steelbooks for every single episodic film in the Skywalker saga, except for The Last Jedi. I would really like to have one. I just have to fork over the cash at some point. But I've got a Phantom Menace. I've got Attack of the Clones. Sorry. And then, I'm just going to put them over here. I've got Revenge of the Sith. A New Hope. Empire Strikes Back. Uh, Return of the Jedi. The Force Awakens. And despite how much I hate it, I have one for Rise of Skywalker as well. Just, you know... For continuity, completionist sake, that kind of thing. Now, despite how much I hate J.J. Uh, Abrams' final Star Wars movie, The Rise of Skywalker, I do not hate Super 8. You know, this is a very good sci-fi film that harkens back to a lot of uh, Steven Spielberg's work, particularly E.T. But I think this deserves its, its love in its own way, you know, for the family drama that's portrayed in here and also the horror elements that are present in it. A very fun movie, although I am sad that my Steelbook edition is sort of has some manufacturer's defects in it. It doesn't close quite right. But awesome artwork, though, and a very good movie from that year that it came out. Now, I had mentioned earlier in this video that uh, Howl's Moving Castle was a, kind of a, 
bewildering part of my uh, steelbook collection, especially for Studio Ghibli movies. But thankfully, Tale of the Princess Kaguya is not a bewildering inclusion because this movie is absolutely brilliant from the late, great Isao Takahata. Um, I mean, there's so much I could say about this film, but I won't because I think you just need to experience this blind for the first time that you see it. Very emotional drama. Um, absolutely. I mean, every Studio Ghibli movie looks great, but this one in particular is, has such a striking um, sort of a hand-drawn woodblock sort of art style to it that complements its folk tale sort of style of narrative as it stands. So uh, definitely check this one out. It is a hard watch, uh, definitely a challenging one, but one that is definitely emotionally intelligent and one that will um, get you to think for sure. Now, I'm a fan of all of the Toy Story movies, except for Lightyear. That movie sucks, but um, I like all of the movies otherwise. But the only one I have on Steelbook, uh, 4K Steelbook in particular, is Toy Story 4. Um, some people might think that's crazy, um, but I do like this movie in the same vein as the first three. Um, so I'm glad that I have this. Maybe at some point I'll get the other three movies on Steelbook. I don't know. Again, that's one of those things where it's just like I have to be in the right mindset to be willing to fork over money for something that I already own. But still, glad that I have this either way. Now, here's one that I think would be a great entry point into Korean cinema if you've never seen films from that country, and that is Train to Busan. This is a action zombie thriller that came out in 2016. In which, as the name suggests, you know, the main characters are basically on a high-speed train the whole entire film. All the while, uh, the zombie apocalypse is happening. And that's pretty much all you need to know. Like, it does that premise extremely well. It's a very effective... It's very effective at what it does. And because of how great it is, I figured, since I saw this on Amazon, this particular edition, back in 2020... I figured that was a no-brainer purchase. All right, and here is another one of those just essential criterion purchases that's kind of like a no-brainer. That is 12 Angry Men. You know, this is one of those things where it's like, you know, I know that people have said what they have said about this not being entirely accurate to the judicial process, specifically with regards to, like, jury duty and whatnot. But, I mean, it, come on, man. Like, it, it's 12 Angry Men. Like, 90 minutes of... Sweaty, tense suspense um, encapsulated into one room. That that has never been done better in any other movie since then. Um, and it is an absolute classic for a reason. Um, directed by Sidney, Sidney Lumet and he, um, headlined by Henry Fonda in an all-star cast of amazing actors. Seriously, if you haven't seen 12 Angry Men, this is just... Words cannot describe just how perfect of a little film this is. Amazing work, and um, another one of those things where if you doubt how good black and white cinema is, watch this movie and you'll be shocked. All right, and I've mentioned uh, Stanley Kubrick's work on this uh, video already, but I'll feature him again because I have this very nice edition of 2001 A Space Odyssey on 4K. Uh, very nice for one reason being that it has um, awesome black and red uh, artwork on the slip cover case. Uh, but it also features this little thing that has, like, some, uh, I don't know what you'd call them, like, lithograph things? Like, collectible, like, image cards? One also has a little art book. That's kind of cool. Um, you can tell that I haven't really looked at this edition much, have you? <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, I've loved this ever since I first saw it. And then when I saw that this 4K edition existed, I knew that was the perfect edition to be able to add this to my collection for, so... Yeah, I think if you love this movie, this might be a good route to go on, especially if you want the best quality possible. You know, 4K, high, di high di ugh, I can't talk, high dynamic range, that kind of thing. So there you go. All right, I promise we're at the end, end stretch here. You know, we're getting close to the end. We have five more movies to go. So thank you again for being here. If you liked what you've seen, feel free to like and subscribe. Um, I can't guarantee that all of my movies are going to be shot in front of a camera like this, but you know, if the if the circumstances deem it necessary, then I will. Um, but yes, the first of the last five movies I'm going to bring up are Wally, 
This is to this day, this is the only Disney movie to have been licensed out to the Criterion Collection. But I figure if any movie deserves to be in the collection, it's this one. One of Pixar's absolute best movies. Um, and it kind of, yeah, I mean, just the contributions that it's made to the art of cinema, like with its first 30 minutes and it's, with it essentially being a silent movie for that time. And just it being such a very relevant and timely and very intelligent um, sort of look at our society and where it's kind of heading to while also being just a very heartwarming, you know, sci-fi romance adventure in general. So, uh, yeah, I'm glad that I have this. This was a Christmas gift from the year that this was released. And just like any other Criterion Edition, you know, it has all these neat special features in it, while also having a 4K disc, a Blu-ray disc, and then special features. So, awesome edition. Um, if they ever make more Disney movies on Criterion, I hope they get the same love and treatment as this does. All right, all of the remaining movies that I'll be showing you are Steelbooks. This one is Warrior, um, starring Joel Edgerton and Tom Hardy and Nick Nolte. Um, sort of an underrated sports drama from 2011, the year that came out. This one I just kind of bought on a whim. Like I was walking around Best Buy and just kind of thinking like, I want to buy a Blu-ray, but I'm not really sure which one to get. And then I saw this and I'm like, oh yeah, I've been meaning to buy that. And so I saw it, it was at a pretty reasonable price, it being a 4K steelbook. And so, yeah, I didn't really go to Best Buy looking for anything in particular when I went there a couple years ago. And this is the one I walked out with. I also bought, um, I believe that same night I also bought a 4K edition of The Untouchables by Brian De Palma. But that was not a steelbook, so that is not that is why it's not being featured in this video. And then a movie with a and then a movie with a similar title to what I just talked about, but definitely much different than it, is The Warriors. Um, this movie being um, I don't know, how would I describe it? It's not necessarily like an action movie, but it's not really like a drama or a thriller either. You know, it's about uh, rival gangs in New York City, direct, and it was directed by Walter Hill. I saw this in uh, in a theater for the Tuesday Night Classic series at Harkins. And I bought this Steelbook edition on Amazon maybe like a day or two later because I saw it was very cheap and reasonable for what it is. And yeah, I'm glad I have this edition. I think it's very fitting for what that movie is and kind of the cult classic um, reputation it has now. So I'm glad that I have this. And um, I also have a nice t-shirt from Ripped Apparel that complements it. Um, it's essentially like this artwork here, um, but it features the Looney Tunes instead. So there you go. Okay, and then next I have Whiplash. I bought this soon after first seeing the movie in 2017, I think it was. Um, and yeah, I mean, what hasn't been said about Whiplash? Like it's a classic of the 2010s, um, an absolute masterpiece from Damien Chazelle. Kind of underwhelming. Um, you know, in the sense that it only has one disc in here, but I think the packaging alone is enough to sell it. Uh, the fact that you have the the artwork of this one symbol, the drumstick here on the spine, and then the blood splatter there, I think that's enough to summarize what the movie is, right? <laughs> um, so all that you've heard about Whiplash and how great it is, it's absolutely true. Truly fantastic movie. Um, see ya. All right, guys, we've come to the end. This is the last collectible Blu-ray that I'm going to show you. And what would and what better way to end things off than with your name? Your name is great, you know? You should cherish your name, because that's the one that your parents gave you. No, I'm kidding. Um, but yeah, this movie is... Uh, man, what can I say about your name? Um, not only is it my favorite movie of 2017, uh, the year that that released in the States... But I mean, it's it's the film that also reinvigorated my interest in anime. I've always, you know, liked anime. You know, I grew up watching uh, Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh and those shows on Kids WB. Uh, but then I kind of fell out of, I kind of fell off watching like new shows and new movies for quite a while, even in my teenage years. Um, and so when I eventually saw this after seeing the glowing recommendation that Chris Stuckman made in his original review. I saw this in theaters, I took a chance on it, and it absolutely blew my mind um, at the time, and I still love it to this day. 
And I credit it for reinvigorating my interest in anime. You know, because of this, I went through almost all of Studio Ghibli's movies. Um, I've tried to keep up with new anime film releases in theaters since then. And I think because of how much it impacted me personally and, you know, on that level, but also just on its own terms, I figured buying a steelbook was essential. And yeah, that's it. Those were all of my collectible Blu-rays. Blu so thank you for sticking around with me. It is now about uh, one in the morning with me finishing this recording. So I am going to bed. Um, and if you're watching it late at night as well, I hope you get some good sleep as well. But I do appreciate you stopping by to watch this video while I share my collection and commemorate 15 years of collecting Blu-rays. And then I'll look forward to seeing you around in the next one. Thank you for watching.